Farmers are the backbone of Indian economy. Agriculture employs over 50% of Indian population. And recently, a farm bill was passed in the parliament and this led to a lot of chaos. Hi, I am Saket and today in this video, we will learn more about the farm bill. So in this video, we will be covering three things. One, how was the existing system? Two, what are the three ordinances? And finally, why are the farmers protesting for their bill? Now, before going to the issue, it is important for us to know the history or how was the current system. So let's say there is a farmer. So if the farmer has to sell his produce, he only had three options under the existing system. Option number one. He can go and sell it in the trade area. Let's say he is a farmer from Karnataka. He has the right to sell his produce within Karnataka to any trader he wants. And the second option is he can go to APMC and sell his uh, goods or produce at APMC. And the last option is he can sell it to the government at MSP or the minimum support price. So these are the only three options which was existing with the farmer before passing of this bill. Now we will go through each one of them and see what is the drawback. So one with respect to selling directly in the trade area. When you sell directly in the trade area, the market itself is pretty restricted. And then there will be exploitation from landlords and other market vendors or traders. So this is not a great option because the entire scope for the farmer who sells the agriculture produce is very limited because he can only sell it in a small direct trade area. So now we will understand the second one that is APMC. So what is APMC? APMC full form stands for Agricultural Produce and Livestock Marketing Committee. So APMC committee was set up by the government. So what APMC committee did was it started setting up mandis or the markets where the farmer can directly come and sell his produce. So these mandis or markets were set up in each state and this was under the control of the state government. So now let's say a farmer grows uh, fruits or vegetables. He can come to this mandi set up by APMC. He can sell his produce there. This led to a problem. Here in mandis, the farmers couldn't directly sell to the trader. Instead, they had to sell to the middlemen because in mandis, middlemen were sitting and whatever uh, produce the farmer sold to the middlemen, they in turn sold it to the trader. Here, even in APMC, they were heavily exploited by the middlemen. So APMC is a government body, the other option they had was they can sell it in the within the trade area to private parties as well. So since here they were directly selling it to um, APMC uh, middlemen, so these people exploited them. So we will see how did they exploit them. So these APMC Monday middlemen, so they used to charge high commission for the farmer produce. And not just that, these APMC Mondays used to form cartels and they used to offer very low prices for the produce of the farmers. So this way, even APMCs exploited the farmers. And finally, there was only the third option remaining, which was selling to the government at MSP or the minimum support price. The first way where he could sell it within the trade area, which meant that the farmer in Karnataka couldn't sell his produce to a private player in Andhra Pradesh because it was only restricted to the trade area. The second way was he could go to an APMC Mandi and sell his produce where there would be middlemen who would charge high commission. And the third way was he could sell it to the government at MSP or the minimum support price. So these were the only three options with the farmer to sell his produce. This new farm bill 2020 came with three ordinance and the entire goal of this bill was one nation one market which meant the farmer could sell his produce anywhere all across India. So as I mentioned this came with three ordinances and we will go through each one of them separately. So the first bill which was passed as ordinance was Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Bill 2020. So according to this, this opened up the market completely for the farmers which meant a farmer in any state could sell his produce in any other state without any restrictions. Which meant the farmer was no longer restricted to the trade areas and he had a broader market where he could sell his produce. This was the main goal behind one nation one market which meant the farmer can go and sell his produce 
anywhere across the country wherever he feels that the price is high or price is favorable. The second bill which was passed as an ordinance was Agreement of Price Assurance and Farm Service Bill 2020. So according to this bill, a farmer could enter into an agreement with a private player well before his produce was available for sale. So what does this mean? So this means, let's say a farmer is growing potato, then the farmer can enter into an agreement with let's say a potato chips factory to sell a certain kgs of potato at an agreed price today itself. So it is more like a future or a forward contract in stock market. So the farmer can agree to sell a particular produce well before it is actually available for sale at an agreed price. The maximum date or the time can only be 5 years. So and finally, we come to the third ordinance which was passed as the bill and that is an amendment in the Essential Commodities Act. So according to Essential Commodities Act, stocking up of food grains or stocking up of farm produce was not allowed. According to this amendment, you are allowed to stock up food grains or food produce till there is an emergency or a significant rise in prices of those products. So now we will summarize all three bills which was passed as an ordinance. So the first bill was FPTC which uh, let the farmers sell their produce anywhere across the country without any restrictions. The second bill let the farmers enter into agreements or contracts well before the harvest. And the third bill that is essential commodities let the farmers stock up up to a particular limit. So all the three bills which was passed as an ordinance is benefiting the farmer. Then. Why are the farmers protesting? Why is the government protesting? So we will understand that. So first we will see why are the farmers protesting. So when the farmers had to obtain MSP or the minimum support price, they usually went to mandis and sold uh, their produce at mandis. So and they were assured MSP. So now since the relevance of mandis is reducing, they are not assured that when they enter co into contracts with private players whether they will still be receiving MSP. So they, even though the government has assured that the farmers will be receiving MSP, there is still uh, not a clarity regarding whether the private players will later start to exploit these farmers by not providing MSP because when the relevance reduces, the government can't actually interfere into private agreements and assure that the farmers are getting the minimum support price. In few other places like Haryana and Punjab, the Mandi system is extremely well organized. So they fear that it will be much hard to deal with the private players rather than being in the Mandi system. Since it's very well organized, the farmers of Haryana and Punjab, most of the farmers are happy that they get good price for their produce. So now we'll see why the state government are protesting. So the opposition and state government have an argument that these big private players will exploit the farmers more than they were exploited by the Mandis. So this is one argument and the second argument they have is the state government used to get lot of revenue from these Mandis. And now state government will be losing this revenue if farmers enter into contracts with the private players. So these are the two main reasons why the farmers are opposing this bill. So we will quickly see the advantages and disadvantages and try to summarize everything. So the advantage is the farmers can now or the farmers now have a broader market and can sell their produce all across the nation. And the farmers can also enter into private contracts and they can sell to the private players at a higher rate. The farmers now are subjected to less exploitation by the government and the mandis. So these are the advantages on one side, whereas the disadvantages on the other side is the system is still not organized. There is no guarantee that the farmers will be getting MSP when they enter into contracts with the private players. And there are also chances that these private players might exploit these small farmers more than the mandis used to exploit them. So to summarize, this bill was considered as a landmark bill by even many of the oppositions of BJP government itself because it gave lot more power to the farmers. And this also comes with few disadvantages. So it is time which will tell us whether this bill is actually a success or a failure. For more such content, please 
Like, share and subscribe to Optionable.